Okay, well, I'm told we have reached um, more than half of the people who have signed up, so that's great. I'm going to go ahead and begin. Um, good afternoon. My name is Krista Ratcliffe. I'm chair of the Department of English at Arizona State University. Welcome to our graduation reception and awards ceremony. Each year, the Department of English hosts a celebration to honor all the English department graduates, as well as all of the award winners. This year, is obviously a little different in that we're all gathered here on Zoom rather than in person at Ross Blakely Hall. What is not different, however, is the pride that the faculty and staff in the English department at ASU have in all of you graduates. What is not different, I hope, is the pride that you are all feeling in your own accomplishments. And what is not different is that graduation ceremonies inspire speakers to invoke pithy thoughts. So, before I introduce today's speaker, I want to open with an unlikely pairing, a Nobel Prize winner, Toni Morrison, and a late night comedian, Stephen Colbert. In a graduation speech at Wellesley College in 2004, Toni Morrison encouraged graduates to imagine themselves as artists, specifically as artists writing the stories of their own lives. Quote, being your own story means you can always choose the tone. It also means that you can invent the language to say who you are and what you mean. I see your life as already artful, waiting, just waiting and ready for you to make it art." End quote. With advice about how to make your life art, Stephen Colbert tells Northwestern University graduates in 2011, quote, if you love only yourself, you will serve only yourself, and you will have only yourself. Instead, try to love others and serve others, and hopefully find those who love and serve you in return." End quote. Today, our graduation speaker who will offer you some thoughts on your own graduation is Sir Jonathan Bate. <clears throat> Jonathan Bate is Foundation Professor of Environmental Humanities at ASU and a faculty member in the Department of English. He is a biographer, broadcaster, eco-critic, and Shakespearean. He is also a senior research fellow at Worcester College, Oxford, where he was provost from 2011 to 2019. He is also the youngest person ever to have been knighted for, literary, for services to literary scholarship. His most recent book is Radical Wordsworth, The Poet Who Changed the World, just out both in the UK and the US. We are very honored to have him here with us today. And so now I'm going to turn the program over to Professor Bate. Thank you so much, Krista, for that generous introduction. Just give me a thumbs up that you can hear me. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, jolly good. Okay, well, welcome everybody uh, to this rather extraordinary occasion. Let me begin with some words from Walt Whitman. All the past we leave behind. We debouche upon a newer, mightier world, varied world, fresh and strong the world we seize. World of labor and the march, pioneers, oh pioneers. You are pioneers, the pioneering class who are participating in the world's first virtual commencement. <laughs> you did not want to graduate in this strange new way, and some kind of normality will return in which you can return and do things that are traditionally done at graduations, hugging your friends, seeing your parents' pride, throwing academic caps in the air, looking your professors in the eye and saying, Thank you. But just because we are not physically present, the congratulations of all your professors are no less real, no less full. Every year, we say that you have done amazingly to stay the course, to finish the race. This year, we say that with redoubled strength because you have stayed the course and finished the race through the unprecedented upheaval of the spring semester of 2020. Today is about you, but let me just take a moment to praise your teachers, 
the support staff in the department, and everyone in the administration here at ASU. Because I am acutely conscious that this university has served you exceptionally well in this perilous time, has coped with the disruption of the abrupt cessation of on-campus teaching better perhaps than any other university in the world. I can say that with authority because I have come here from a very old university called Oxford where things move very slowly and where most of the professors had until now never heard of Zoom or Canvas, <laughs> never contemplated the possibility that a virtual classroom can offer as real a teaching and learning experience as a dusty 400 year old lecture room. I can tell you for sure that they struggled greatly with the transition. ASU, by contrast, is a pioneer of online learning. And indeed, for many of you graduating today via the online route, little will have changed in your learning experience, even as your lives changed suddenly in March, bringing intense new challenges, which you have met with great courage. But because we had the experience, the infrastructure and the willpower forged by the creation of ASU Online, we were able to transform our in-person classes with remarkable speed and effectiveness. But there was a huge amount of work from your professors, from the administrators in achieving that. So I know you will want to join me in thanking everyone who made that possible under the indefatigable and unflappable leadership of Chris Radcliffe. Perhaps if you've got the Zoom skills by now, take a moment to hit that applause button. But enough about us, here are a few words for you. To repeat, but slightly adapt those words of old Walt, grandfather of American poetry, addressing the pioneers who stepped westward, as many of you from the Eastern states did when you made the choice to come to Arizona. All the past you leave behind, you debouche upon a newer, mightier world, varied world, Fresh and strong, the world you seize, world of labor and the march, pioneers, oh, pioneers. You are leaving behind your past as a student at ASU, but you are not saying goodbye to us. You are taking that past with you in a thousand memories and a hundred friendships. Our past shapes our present and prepares us for our future Cherish the memories of ASU that will strengthen you. Stay in touch, come back to see us, and think about ways in which you can give back to your alma mater in order to help create opportunities for future generations to benefit in the way that you have benefited. You are debouching upon a very new and mightily scary world a world varied beyond all imagining from what it was at the start of your final year of study. Walt Whitman's verb, debouche, the Merriam-Webster dictionary tells us, is often used in military contexts to refer to the action of troops proceeding from a closed space to an open one. In the poem, Pioneers, O Pioneers, it was a brilliant world, word choice because of its evocation of the journey from the stuffily closed space of the East Coast, which in the 19th century still felt shaped and constrained by old Europe, to the wide open spaces of the West, which are nowhere better embodied than in the Sonora Desert, where you have made your intellectual home these last four or more years. Now though, you are debouching into a world that is temporarily closed, a world that does not seem fresh and strong, a world not of labor and the march, but of the highest unemployment rate since the Great Depression and an unprecedented ban, not only on marching, but even on public gathering. But you are the ones who are fresh and strong. You are the pioneers who have weathered the storm, completing your degrees whilst under such extraordinary pressure and fear. So you will endure the challenge and find your way in the world. And you will have been well equipped by your major in English. 
Whether your focus has been in rhetoric or literature or language or education or film or creative writing or any combination of the above, you will have grown and flourished in two arts that you will discover to be of immeasurable value in whatever walk of life you find yourself. The ancient Romans called those arts ratio and oratio, reasoning and speaking, or as we would say, critical thinking and persuasive argument. For centuries, these skills have been the essence of a humanist education. Last year, I published a book called How the Classics Made Shakespeare, in which I showed how Shakespeare learned those arts of rhetoric in his high school, then used them to forge the most profound, varied and humane body of dramatic literature ever to have been created. Boys of Shakespeare's generation in 16th century England were given a grammar school ed education so that they could become responsible citizens, government administrators perhaps. But for Shakespeare and his brightest contemporaries, such as Christopher Marlowe, the old worlds opened up by their study of the stories and the poetry of antiquity inspired them to imagine something new, a public theater in which every question of what it means to be human, to be a self, a member of a family, a lover, a friend, a neighbor, a part of the body politic could be explored and tested, pushed to extremes of tragedy, celebrated in joyous comedy, written into history for the benefit of future generations. Those arts of ratio and oratio, critical thinking and persuasive speaking, are a golden thread running through the literary tradition, making possible everything from Chaucer to Shakespeare to Toni Morrison. They are skills that we hone whenever we read with thoughtfulness or look at a performance on stage, on television or on film with attention. They are not dependent on formal education. Toni Morrison was a university teacher, whereas Shakespeare didn't go to university, but was always a reader of genius. Walt Whitman left school at the age of 11, but schooled himself in the literary tradition. You, I know, will never stop reading, never cease to immerse yourself in the diverse body of creative endeavor that drew you to major in English in the first place. But by studying for a degree, you have done something extra. You have made yourself into a scholar. So what has scholarship taught you to know and to see? Another American pioneer, the New England philosopher of transcendentalism, Ralph Waldo Emerson, had three answers in his great oration, The American Scholar. If he were delivering this address today, he would say that you have become man thinking and woman thinking. In his time, it was only man. We have made at least some progress in the last two centuries. The three things that make the thinking person, says Emerson, are these, I quote, the first in time and the first in importance of the influences upon the mind is that of nature. Every day, the sun, and after sunset, night and her stars. Ever the winds blow, ever the grass grows. Every day, men and women conversing, beholding and beholden. The scholar must needs stand wistful and admiring before this great spectacle. He must settle its value in his mind. For us today, for you in the future, there is no more important question than that of nature, of the future of the planet. Ever the winds blow, ever the grass grows, said Emerson. But the ways in which the winds blow and the grass grow are now, in the age that we have come to call the Anthropocene, shaped by humankind and its toxic emissions in a way that Emerson could never have imagined. Our most urgent need is to settle the value of our planet in our minds. 
And that is something to which one strand of our work in the English department here at ASU, our courses and research in environmental humanities is especially alert. It might seem presumptuous to suppose that mere humanists, as opposed to climate scientists and politicians, have a contribution to make in this regard, but we do. So, for example, I've argued in a book to be published here in the US next week that one of the figures who has genuinely changed the world by making us think about nature in a new way, with the admiration of which Emerson speaks, was the poet William Wordsworth. And indeed, Emerson twice visited Wordsworth in England. Emerson continued his meditation on the formation of the true scholar by saying this. The next great influence into the spirit of the scholar is the mind of the past. In whatever form, whether of literature, of art, of institutions, that mind is inscribed. Books are the best type of the influence of the past, and perhaps we shall get at the truth learn the amount of this influence more conveniently by considering their value alone. The wisdom of the mind of the past is now available to us in many forms as well as books, television, film, above all the internet, and our sense of that mind is far more diverse than it was for Emerson. We have learned to listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples as well as that of the western tradition. But there remains a challenge that you will face and for which your studies in English will have prepared you well, to know how to sort the mind from the mindlessness, the historic truths from the fake news. And that is important, especially so in our fractured public realm, because you have a duty to put your skills in ratio and oratio, in critical thinking and persuasive speaking, to public use. This is Emerson's third point. There goes in the world a notion that the scholar should be a recluse, a valetudinarian, as unfit for any handiwork or public labor as a penknife for an ax. The so-called practical men sneer at speculative men as if because they speculate or see, they could do nothing. Action is with the scholar subordinate, but it is essential. Without it, thought can never ripen into truth. While the world hangs before the eye as a cloud of beauty, we cannot even see its beauty. Inaction is cowardice. There can be no scholar without the heroic mind. The preamble of thought, the transition through which it passes from the unconscious to the conscious is action. Only so much do I know as I have lived. Instantly we know whose words are loaded with life and whose not. You have studied well these past few years. Now it is time, as the character of Strether says in Henry James's novel, The Ambassadors, now is the time to live all you can. It's a mistake not to. It doesn't matter what you do in particular, so long as you've had your life, if you haven't had that, what have you had? So stand up for what you believe. Believe it rationally and argue for it articulately. Be an activist, but a reasoned and a persuasive activist. Make it your business to make the world a better place. Just now, that sounds like an impossible task, but the lockdown will come to an end. To revert to Walt Whitman's word, debouche, often used in military contexts. You are debouching from ASU in the midst of our war, a world war against a debilitating virus that may just be nature's way of sending us a warning about the way we live now. These months will be marked forever as a significant moment in the history of the world. Never before in thousands of years have commerce, travel, religious gathering, any gathering, come to a halt all across the world. When the world begins again, you can lead us into the future. We have sought to give you the resources to do so. Above all, the resilience that can come from literature, 
from comforting words. Let me end by renewing on behalf of the English department our congratulations to you, especially to our prize winners, but to every one of you. And end by quoting some words from another inspiring work of literature. A few days ago, we remembered the 75th anniversary of victory in an old war, the defeat of Nazism in Europe. A man who did his bit for that victory was the French Algerian novelist, Albert Camus, who fought in the French resistance. Shortly after the war, he wrote a novel called La Peste, The Plague, in which he imagined a town under siege from an epidemic. So many details of that novel uncannily anticipate the place where we find ourselves today. But what comes through at the end is the endurance and the hope of the human spirit. So I leave you with these words of Albert Camus. Amongst the heaps of corpses, the clanging bells of ambulances, the warnings of what goes by the name of fate, amongst unremitting waves of fear and agonized revolt, the horror that such things could be, always a great voice had been ringing in the ears of these forlorn, panicked people, a voice calling them back to the land of their desire, a homeland. It lay outside the walls of the stifled, strangled town, in the fragrant brushwood of the hills, in the waves of the sea, under free skies, and in the custody of love. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. That was lovely. Now I can turn us to the awards, which is an exciting part of the ceremony. The first award is the Aleda Rodriguez Memorial Award in Creative Writing. This award created by Sean Coughlin in honor of Aleda Rodriguez, who died of breast cancer in 2012, provides financial support for ASU graduates graduate students who want to pursue a career in creative writing. One annual award of $1,000 is given to a selected student, uh, an MFA in creative writing student, alternating years between fiction and poetry. This year's award in poetry is Maritza Estrada. Maritza, an MFA candidate in creative writing, was awarded the Rodriguez Prize for her poem, Grief Harmony, as form in letters. Of the poem, one of the judges wrote, quote, I greatly admire how this poem mimics the concept of absence in form and content, where the poem reads like a script in moments, almost like a play, an act, an art of creation of voice in a form that desperately tries to summon voice from the void. A consideration of time, ancestry, magic, and culture exists in these lines." End quote. Congratulations, Maritza. The next award is the ASU Department of English Outstanding Graduate Teaching Assistant Award. These awards of $1,000 each recognize the teaching achievements of doctoral students in the Department of English. Students are evaluated on the basis of teaching excellence as observed by both writing programs and research area faculty mentors. This year, the, the winners are Scott Cady and Kate Hope. Scott is a PhD student in the literature program he has held several student leadership positions in the Department of English, including for the Long 19th Century Colloquium and the ASU Book Traces. And next year will be president of the Graduate Scholars of English Association. His faculty advisor, Professor, Professor Devaney Lozier says, quote, Scott is an impressive educator leader, bringing people together to do the work of advancing collective and individual knowledge 
in the humanities. Kate is graduating this semester with a PhD in English education. Her faculty mentor, Professor Jessica Early, said after observing Kate's teaching, quote, her class was truly one of the most dynamic, engaging, innovative, and supportive classroom communities that I have ever observed, end quote. Kate will be an assistant professor at California State Stanislaus this fall. So congratulations, Scott and Kate. The next award is the Carl C. Carlisle Award, or fellowship, Linguistics Fellowship. This graduate fellowship of $650 by Joan Berry, an MTSL program alum and her husband, was created in honor of Joan's grandmother, grandfather, Carl C. Carley. The fellowship is given to students in linguistics who take great pride in their efforts and exhibit intellectual curiosity. Students are selected based on linguistic interests and goals, overall achievement, and faculty recommendation. The winner this year is Kelly Bauer. Kelly is a first year PhD student in the Linguistics and Applied Linguistics program with research interests in sociolinguistics, indigenous language revitalization, and critical discourse analysis. She currently serves as a research assistant for Professor Neil Lester and is also a documentary filmmaker. Congratulations, Kelly. The next award is the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Dean's Medal for English. Each department and school within the college has selected a phenomenal student who has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to academic excellence during his or her time at ASU. The winners for this year are Micah McCreary for the Spring 2020 Medal and Carly Verbecki for the Fall 2019 Medal. Micah is graduating this spring with BAs in English Literature, French, and Political Science, as well as a minor in Chinese and a certificate in International Studies. He will pursue a graduate degree at Harvard Law School in fall 2020. Stephanie R. DeLuce, Principal Honors Faculty Fellow at Barrett, said about Micah, quote, his willingness to learn and his inquiring mind serve him well, end quote. Carly graduated last fall with BAs in English Literature and Political Science and a certificate in Creative Writing. The Dean's Medal Selection Committee wrote, quote, Having grown up as a wheelchair user, Carly is committed to advocating for the rights of people with disabilities through law, awareness, and public policy, a practice she has cultivated during her time at ASU. So congratulations, Micah and Carly. The next award is the Department of English Faculty Scholarship. This scholarship of $750 is funded by the faculty in the Department of English and is given to an undergraduate enrolled in any of its programs, whether on campus or online. It is awarded on the basis of need as well as grades and recommendations. The 2020 winner is Shivani <clears throat> Jaiswal. Shivani is a double major in English, creative writing, and social work. Over the next academic year, she plans to visit Germany and Switzerland with Barrett, the Honors College, intern with a literary agency in London, and study as an exchange student at Royal, Royal Holloway College. The scholarship selection committee wrote, quote, she is clearly a highly organized, well-motivated and energetic student whose high aspirations should be encouraged by awards such as this one. Congratulations, Shivani. The next award is the English Graduate Student International Book Scholarship. This book scholarship was created by J. Young Park, who earned a BA in English in 1997 and his PhD in English 2004 at ASU. He is currently an associate professor and chair of the Department of English Education in the College of Education at Shanbuk National University in Korea. 
The scholarship of $300 goes to an international graduate student in the Department of English to be used for books and is awarded based on need and faculty recommendation. The winner for this year is <coughs> Aaron Agorser. Aaron is a PhD student in the literature program. He is a Catholic priest from Ghana working on biography and autobiography in African and African American literature and culture. He serves on the pastoral team at ASU's Catholic Newman Center and is involved in campus ministry and outreach for students from Africa and the US. Congratulations, Aaron. The next award is the Film and Media Studies Scholarship Award. This scholarship based on merit and need, benefits students selected for ASU Sundance Film Festival internship. It is supported by individual donations to the Film and Media Studies Scholarship Fund. Award amounts vary. The spring 2020 awardees are Clarence Boyce and Jason Woods. Both Clarence and Jason are undergraduate students in the Film and Media Studies program. So congratulations to both of them. The next award is the Friends of the Department of English Scholarship. Funded by many donation to English's Scholarship and Fellowships Fund, the $1,250 scholarship is for undergraduate English and film and media studies majors, including online students. It is awarded based on academic merit and faculty recommendation. The fall 2020 winner was Nora Martinez. Nora is a double major in English, literature, and anthropology. According to the Scholarship Selection Committee, Nora's work and her studies to date are exceptional. And she has, quote, great potential as a future scholar of English, end quote. She also participated in the recent undergraduate humanities research poster session with a project entitled <clears throat> Queer Latinx Visibility in Young Adult Sci-Fi Fantasy. Congratulations, Nora. The next award is the George and Cullis Portnoff Endowed Fellowship in Comparative Literature. This fund, with an award of $3,000, was established by former chair and professor of English, Nicholas Salerno, to honor George and Cullis Portnoff for their lifelong commitment to a vision of a world united by the international literary community. Cullis was a professor in the ASU Department of English where she served as chair from 1957 to 1964. Cullis' husband, George, had been a Russian officer who had served with Tsar Nicholas II's army. He was in Spain at the onset of the Bolshevik Revolution and could never return to his native Russia. He was a professor and chair of the Department of Foreign Languages at, a Foreign Languages at ASU, now the School of International Letters and Cultures. George passed away in 1948 and Cullis in 1993. The 2020-21 winner of this award is Aisha Arslan. Aisha is a Fulbright student from Turkey in her first year of ASU's MA in Comparative Literature program. She has interests in migration, translation, and global studies, and is doing a master's thesis on English and Turkish, tra Turkish translations of, creating wor of creative work by Turkish German immigrant writers. The next award is the High Impact Internship Award. This is the second year of this award, which was initially funded by Sun Devil Giving Donors in 2019. Two awards of $1,000 each are awarded to undergraduate and or graduate students in the Department of English who are completing unpaid internships with a high impact provider, a nonprofit working toward the greater social good. The two winners of this scholarship are Diana Schooling, and Kaylin Yazi. Diana Schooling is an online MTSL program student based in the Seattle, Washington area. Diana completed her high impact internship teaching English language learners at the University of Washington Tacoma International Writing Center. 
the award judges note wrote, quote, with humor and candor, Diana beautifully articulated the impact of her work beyond ASU in her description of teaching as an act of decolonization. She also shared that her internship has reinforced her belief that teaching is her calling, end quote. Kaylin Yazi is an undergraduate student in English Writing, Rhetorics, and Literacies program. Her high impact internship was working with ASU Turning Point Magazine. The award judges wrote, according to Kaylin, her internship has instilled in her the confidence to pursue her writing and publishing career while simultaneously teaching her how to reach out to other native sun devils. She was able to show how her internship has resonance for other ASU students and in native communities beyond ASU. So congratulations, Diana and Kaylin. The next award is the Homecoming Writing Contest. The Homecoming Writing Contest celebrates the creative and scholarly writing of undergraduate students in the Department of English, English majors and film and media studies majors or minors, including online students. Awards of $500 each are given to the first place winners in the categories of poetry, short story or creative nonfiction, and scholarly essay. An awards presentation and reading event coincide with ASU's homecoming week and typically takes place each fall. The 2019 winners for this award are Brenna Camping, Thomas Fate, and Alyssa Lindsay. Brenna is graduating with a BA in English, Creative Writing, this spring. She received the Fiction Creative Nonfiction Award for her piece, Amber-Eyed Raptors. Thomas is an undergraduate in English's literature program. He received the award for his scholarly essay, The Misery of Want, Why Violence Abounds in Wuthering Heights. Alyssa is graduating with BAs in both English, creative writing, and global health this spring. She received the Poetry Award for her series, Three Chicano Poems. Congratulations, Brenna, Thomas, and Alyssa. The next, whoops, the next award is the Jules J. Anatole Creative Writing Scholarship. This $1,000 scholarship for fiction writing was established by Ronald and Phyllis Anatole in honor of Ronald's father, Jules J. Anatole, who was a lifelong bibliophile who legally changed his name from Jules Joseph Antikulski because of his admiration for the French novelist. The scholarship supports undergraduate students involved in creative writing in ASU's English department. The winners or the winner for this uh, award is Christopher Clements. Christopher Clements is an undergraduate in English's creative writing program. The judges wrote the following of his award-winning story, quote, witness to an accident that leads to the death of an elderly neighbor. The piece's narrator is confronted with the fragility of life. Thematically complex and detail rich, this story had a level of sophistication that rose above the other submissions. So congratulations, Christopher. The next award is the Katherine Turner Dissertation Fellowship. This fellowship was funded by Katherine Turner, who taught American literature and creative writing in the ASU Department of English from 1946 until at least the mid 1970s. The fellowship, which is an award of approximately $13,000, was established in 1994 and enables doctoral candidates in the Department of English working in the field of American literature to finish writing their dissertations. The 2020 winner is Jerome Clark. A member of the Navajo Nation, Jerome is a fourth year PhD student in the literature program with a focus on indigenous literature. The working title of his dissertation is Talking from the Heart, Dene Storytelling and Sovereignty as Imagination, Living, and Future Making. 
He plans to defend his dissertation in March or April 2021. Congratulations, Jerome. The next award is the Maybell A. Lyon Poetry Award. Poet Maybell A. Lyon published more than a thousand poems in commercial and literary magazines and anthologies. She founded the first public library in Goodyear, Arizona, and co-founded the Arizona Poetry Society, serving as its first president. After she died, friends and family of Lyon made a memorial gift to establish this award at ASU in honor of her love of poetry. Lyon's poems and writings were provided to the English department as an archive for faculty and students to study. This award gives a monetary prize of $300 and a public reading with the Lyon Award judge to an undergraduate or graduate creative writing student each year for a single poem of any length. The winner this year is Ana Flores. Anna is a graduate student in the MFA program who also holds a BA in English from 2018 from ASU. A Flores poem, My Reason for Writing is That, Judge J. Dodd wrote, quote, there is a directness that disrupts the use of misdirection and metaphor. The poet writes, it might be the best revenge to make a man treat himself as witness to his own monstrosity. Yes. I am in pain. The ethos declares, says the judge, how vindication costs and what an indelible place that leads the reader. Congratulations, Anna. The next award is the Marvin Fisher Book Award. This award was established by English chair Wendy Wilkins in the 1990s to honor Marvin Fisher, a former professor and chair of English at ASU. Sadly, Professor Fisher passed away earlier this year at the age of 92. The award of $250 is given biannually to an international student enrolled in a graduate program in the Department of English, the purpose being to purchase books. Awards are based on merit, academic need, and faculty recommendations. The winners this year are for fall of 2019, Avrajit Day, and in the spring of 2019, Malika Nouri. Avrajit is a, two, is, is a third year PhD student in the linguistics and applied linguistics, in the linguistics and applied linguistics program. Originally from India, his research interests are language transfer, computer assisted language learning, bilingualism, eco-criticism, and teacher development. Malika Nouri is in her fourth year of the PhD program in writing, rhetorics, and literacies. She served as associate director of the second language writing program for 2019-2020 and is a teaching assistant. Originally from Iran, her area of specialty is second language writing. She wants to make a positive contribution to future writers learning by developing strategies for enhancing teaching pedagogies. So congratulations, Arajit and Malika. The next award is the Outstanding Paper on Second Language Writing Award. Established and funded by Professor of English Paul Matsuda, who directs sec Second Language Writing at ASU, this annual award of $200 recognizes outstanding intellectual work by ASU graduate students on issues related to second language writing and writers. The paper can be a philosophical, historical, or empirical study, or a critical review essay. The winner for spring 2020 is Arajit Day. The second winner is Michael Winans. We've already met Arajit, as this is his second award announced today. Michael is a PhD student in the linguistics and applied linguistics programs with interests in second language acquisition and English in global contexts. His winning paper was entitled, Email Requests, Politeness Evaluations by Instructors from Diverse Language Backgrounds. Congratulations, Abhijit and Michael. The next award is the Salerno and Harkins Film Studies Award. 
This award helps reduce the cost of housing for students with an interest in film and media studies who are selected for ASU Sundance Film Festival internship. Amounts vary. The award is named for the theater chain owner and operator, Dan Harkins, and the late Nick Salerno, an English professor who taught for 33 years at ASU, including the first film courses. Harkins took one of Salerno's film classes when he was a student at ASU and credited the professor, who died in 2016, for helping him save his theater franchise with some invaluable marketing advice. We acknowledge these students' excellence in being selected for the internship, which is quite competitive, and their work at the festival itself. And the students are Clarence Boyce, Jasmine Figueroa, Victoria Pettit, Alexander Phillips, Elizabeth Rowey, Elizabeth Schrader, Brandon Selman, and Jason Woods. Congratulations, everyone. The next award is the Wilfred A. Farrell Memorial Fellowship. This award of $450 is made possible by an endowment from Wilfred Bill Farrell, a former director of graduate studies and English department chair who had a strong interest in strengthening the English graduate program at ASU. Recipients must be graduate students who demonstrate excellence in teaching, research, and service. The winner this year is Malika Nori, and we've already met Malika as this is her second award announced today. Congratulations. The next award is the Glendon and Catherine Swarthout Awards in Writing. These awards, established in 1962 by celebrated authors Glendon and Catherine Swarthout, are financially one of the top five creative writing prizes in America for students from undergraduate and graduate writing programs. This award series has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years to support emerging creative writers at ASU. The Swarthout family recently generously amended the gift agreement, which enabled additional prizes <clears throat> and amounts going forward in 2021 I'm sorry, in 2020, the first prizes were $2,225 each. Second prizes were $1,625 each. Third prizes were $1,000 each. And honorable mentions were $500 each. The 2020 winners for poetry include Eric Peterson, Caitlin Corning, Janani Lakshaman, Shamanan and Austin Davis. These awards, by the way, were given out earlier this semester, also via a Zoom uh, ceremony. The 2020 winners for fiction are Nathaniel Buckingham, Anahi Harara, Sophie Huxel, and Sarah Simon Simonson. Simonson. The Graduate Poetry Awards go to Maritza Estrada, Jade Cho, Julian Delacruz, and A. Minan. And the Graduate Fiction Award goes to Steffi Sin, Chloe Boxer, Scott Dautridge, and Jackson Kellogg. So congratulations to all of these winners. Well, we have Come to the end of our awards ceremony. Thank you for joining us. And to all the ASU and FMS graduates who are listening, please know that the Department of English at ASU wishes you the very best. And as you go forward, remember Toni Morrison's words. As you move from university, write the next chapters in the stories of your lives, picking your own tone, picking your own story. Congratulations, everyone.